The Mexican state of Sonora. Distant, sweltering, and vast. From the bustle of Ciudad Obregón, peace and tranquility of Coquerit, the phenomenal San Carlos and Guaymas, and the overbearing heat of Hermosillo, Sonora is truly a dream for diehard travelers. After taking a 4K walk around Hermosillo, we're continuing our day in 42 degree heat, complete with a pelvis injury. Good luck! Hermosillo has a lot to offer. Famous Sonora hot dogs, dehydrating hill climbs, classic Mexican mercados, music festivals, and owls? Plus much more that's impossible to include in only one video. Before a quick jaunt back to Mexico City and final visits to 2019 legacy characters San Luis Potosí and Zacatecas, it's time to bid a fond farewell to the Sonoran Desert. Do you think you can handle it? Hi everyone and welcome to part number 18 of my 2022 Mexico series and also welcome to the absolutely stifling northern Mexican city of Hermosillo in the state of Sonora. In the last video we did a 30 minute 4k walk around where basically we get a bit of an insight into what the city is like in 30 minutes in one shot. You can check that video out up above but if you know my channel well by now you will know that the second video is always about going into a bit more depth and covering a lot more ground. So on that note let's get going. I'm starting today's video off in one of those sort of regular residential areas a bit further north in Edamosil because basically I went to Starbucks uh, and it's a bit further out all right but we're gonna head back to the center through Centro and to Plaza Saragossa to check out some things there ahead of me also behind that building up there is Cerro de Campana Bell Hill basically it gives amazing views of the city hopefully we can get up there but in terms of heat you know I honestly do need to look after myself today because 41 degrees apparently it's going to get to today it, it can get to 49 celsius as well which is just horrendous it's one of the hottest cities in mexico and supposedly is one of the top five most livable cities in mexico apparently i think expats would disagree with that but whatever just come across this it's like an old saloon old west chicken for takeaway Kind of reminds me of in uh, Durango, you know, there, there's a lot of history with uh, Old West movies and everything. So, uh, yeah, it's cool to see this, this sort of thing in Sonora as well. So, today is actually my final day in Sonora. So, as well as being about Edmosillo, I kind of want this to be a, a goodbye, farewell to Sonora. Probably, if not definitely, the most underrated state in Mexico, as I said in one of the previous ones, it has kind of been an enigma for me, until now. Quick stop at 7-Eleven. I have been asked recently quite a lot in comments, how do I survive walking the streets of Mexico in this heat? The answer is this, Electrolid. I might be completely wrong, this might just be a placebo, but I do feel that it makes a difference. You know, I end up feeling like a machine and could go all day with a few of these in my bag. It's quite pretty and colorful, isn't it? Hermosillo. That hill up there, you can see the antennas on the top. That's quite common actually in Mexico. I remember in Mazatlan, there was a hill I went up that had those antennas on. I guess it makes sense having them up high. Like maybe there's like a radio station up there. I think that was the case in Mazatlan. You've got this nice sign here, Hermosillo. Originally called Pitic. I'm possibly pronouncing that wrong. I'm assuming it comes from indigenous languages, but it was renamed after Jose Maria Gonzalez Hermosillo, who was an insurgent during revolutionary times. Someone like Hermosillo, you might think that being close to the US border, it would have more of a US style Americanized feel. And yeah, it does a little bit, but definitely not to the same extent of someone like Juarez, which is you know, right on the border. I do feel here, at least from first impressions, that there is still that kind of Mexican element, if you know what I mean, especially in the uh, Centro area. Lovely. Sometimes when traveling, Seemingly irrelevant, insignificant points often fascinate me. Benches and the bins have a little Hermosillo sign on it. That's cool. We're gonna have some doggos later. I don't know why I say that with an Australian accent. It's because in Australia, I think they say doggos for hot dogs. Um, 
yeah, just so you know, hot dogs are just as much Mexican as anywhere else. I've learned that in the north. I'm in Mercado Municipal. What a shock. As if we haven't been in one of these before, right? <laughs> um, I think I've probably had every possible dish you could probably have, possibly have even, in a um, Mercado. Um, but there are still new things to see if you haven't been to Northern Mexico. Coyotas, uh, different varieties of tacos, um, taquerias everywhere, cabeza, barbacoa. Oh, there's a huge chicken up there uh, above this um, butchery. Can you see it? I hope so, because I can't. Joking aside, um, if you are coming to Mexico for the first time, there really isn't any other way that is better than this to kind of experience what daily life in Mexico is like. You know, locals come here, they sit at these communal places eating, and when you do that yourself for the first time, it might feel a little bit uncomfortable because you're kind of like, oh my God, am I intruding? Am I meant to be doing this? But do it, jump straight in. That's the way to experience the country. Immersing yourself is fascinating and I love it. While I'm here, I thought I might as well be a basic bitch for one final time and have some tacos de pescado, basically fish tacos, as I am in Sonora and it is known to be uh, a state which is well known for its mariscos seafood, um, particularly near the coast, so in coastal cities you'll have a lot of camarones, shrimp, um, but why not, we're not by the coast, but who cares, I want seafood. So you get like pico de gallo and uh, I guess some sort of coleslaw vegetable thing. And we have two tacos de pescado. So it's kind of like, I've had this before in like uh, Sinaloa in Culiacan. If you're from the UK, it's kind of like fish and chips in a taco. <laughs> it's brilliant. This is very Northern Mexico because you don't always get like um, cilantro and cebolla with everything as you would in the South of Mexico. I think it might be a thing in terms of uh, seafood tacos in that you just don't really have that. You often have like what I said about that cold story thing. You often have um, like loads of lettuce on seafood tacos, whether they're camarones, pescado, marlin, whatever. Mm. Absolute dynamite. As I said, it's kind of like fish and chips in a taco. Pescado, they like batter. It's really good. I've got abuelos y abuelitas around me having cotales de camarón or like ceviche and um, I was going to say coming to somewhere like this now after so many years of filming these videos in Mexico makes me feel so nostalgic especially as it's kind of coming to an end because I notice now in comparison to four years ago I'm like 100% confidence in terms of operating in these situations yeah my Spanish is not fluent nowhere near that it's never going to be but I can survive in these situations and uh, I never thought I could do or I would be able to, but now I can, it's just normal. Um, so I feel incredibly nostalgic thinking something like this, because I've always come to these places so many times over the years, and now it has become the norm. It's crazy. Plaza Hidalgo. This is that festival that's happening. It's literally this weekend. I didn't know about that until I got here. Great planning, David. Um, so you never know. I'll see what's happening later with that. But um, it all looks very nice, doesn't it? This plaza with uh, these colourful buildings, nice architecture. There's a monument in the middle. Classic red Volkswagen Beetle over there. I love these little statue thingies all over the place. It's like an ice cream. Abuelo. Hola, senor. Obviously, you can't buy any ice cream here or lollies. Popsicles. Look, it's Louis Armstrong. What an icon. He's legendary. 1901 to 1971. Top tier elite. Awesome street art as well. We are in a bit of a ghetto area, if you know what I mean. There's a huge dog, or is it a wolf? Or is it a Mexi dog? Here we go. This is where that festival is, I guess. Tonight, I guess they're doing like a sound check in preparation. Also, look at this orange tree, spectacular. 
Well, what are they tangerines? They normally give me a bad taste in my mouth. Which is gracias to the senor over there who told me it's closed. What a shock. For once in my life, can something just be open in Mexico? Is that too much to ask? Clearly it is, especially in Sonora. I noticed like even churches, cathedrals are closed all the time. Like businesses, how do they make money? It's like, let's set up a restaurant. When should we open? One hour on a Tuesday afternoon, that'll work. I'm joking, obviously. Uh, it's just one of those things, isn't it? But we can still see it from outside. I think it's Baroque, neoclassic, 1800s. I think it was actually uh, finished construction early 20th century. So it's reasonably modern in comparison to, you know, the older sort of 1500s, 1600s cathedrals, which by the way, I can no longer say cathedral. After all this time in Mexico, it has become cathedral. Oh, there is some interesting architecture here. This looks a bit sort of art deco with that overhanging bit. Then you've got this uh, judicial building here, which is completely different, with this dramatic music in the background. Uh, but this is what I like. This hellhole concrete structure. Is it a car park? I've got a thing about estacionamientos in these videos. Right, let's go up this hill. I mean, honestly, I really can't be asked, but oh, this is YouTube, so I have to... Yeah, as I said earlier, I have nostalgia, but I also have an element of... I don't know what the word is. Kind of over-familiarity. Another hill, brilliant. I've just seen Bidaya, which is what I've been looking for ever since I got to Sonora. Brilliant. Yas Queen. These are the sort of buildings I love as well. Classic kind of dilapidated. What once was glorious, probably with this big gate. Now I'm not looking so great. This is a fucking nightmare. It's not even that high and the slope is not even that steep. Look, it's not that bad, but because of the heat, 41 degrees now, it's kind of amplified a little bit. So I'm taking a rest. Give me neck. Oh, it's not that bad. People often say, come on, David, you've done worse. I believe I have. Being up here, it kind of makes you think like there's this natural landscape, beautiful landscape, and then you've got this random shopping mall there, you know. Imagine if the human race was obliterated in an extinction level event tomorrow, and then in a million years, an alien race turned up and uncovered this overgrown concrete thing. They'd be like, what is Sears? <laughs> Dios mio. Look at this, homies, and Karens, and Huns. And Mijolos. You've got these views going off into the distance, these roads going up there, tall buildings surrounded by these desert mountains. And there's something on this. Oh, Jesus Cristo, something. I can't see it. Is that Jesus Christ lives? I can't really see, to be honest. And there's a sign over there, Canagua or something. Is that like the region? I can't remember. I really love this, this rocky bit jutting up. There's a big park over there. What's that park called? I'm sure I saved it on my map. Thankfully, I'm finally up here. This has been one of those occasions when someone tells you something will be easy peasy lemon squeezy, but it turns out to be difficult, difficult, lemon difficult. Oh shit. And there's the Mirador, which I think is called Caracol, which is a cat, isn't it? Muerto. I'm dead. I swear, Northern Mexico has turned me into an absolute machine. I think I mentioned that in San Carlos. Like, I'm dead, but I could do it again. So this hill, Cerro de la Campana, the hill of the bell. Yeah, that's right. Um, shaped like a bell, but also apparently because of the way the mountain's rocks smash together, it sounds like a bell. Yes, I got that off Wikipedia. Um, there's also the uh, Universidad de Sonora. There's a van over there with some guys that have, I guess, come on some sort of field trip thing. Um, let's go to the university. Oh yeah, that park, Parque Madero. And there's a really nice church in front of it as well, if you can see. It looks very sort of old and, I don't know, gothic style. You know what? Sometimes it pays to be exhausted and have a cigarette. Look. And listen, they're doing Valero. Jane Torvald and Christopher Dean, 1984 Sarajevo Winter Olympics. They ice dance to that.
sorry, things keep happening. Is that girl having a quinceanera? I assume so. We're finally here. I thought I'd come to the Universidad de Sonora, Campus Hermosillo. Why? Simply because I think it's cool. I love this whole campus thing. I'm on campus. And when I walked through here the other day, it reminded me of when I was in LA and I went to UCLA campus. Um, and you know, I didn't go to university. Apologies to anyone who has been to university because I probably sound like a bit of a dick right now. But like you've got all these, uh, I guess, dorm buildings, right, with numbers on. Um, you know, and it's quite nice in terms of like you've got these outdoor seating areas. I can imagine students doing work out here, having coffee together. And there's even a little coffee shop in the middle of it I saw the other day. Cafe Neo or whatever it's called. So for many of you watching, I'm sure you're from a country where university education is kind of expected and almost like compulsory in a way in terms of what your family expect or whatever. But in the UK, it's kind of similar to what I hear about the US. You've got two options. Either you come from a wealthy family or you have a college fund saved up like from birth or you have to be willing to be in debt for like 30 years. It costs like £9,000 per year, at least the last time I heard. And I wasn't in a position financially and my family wasn't in a position financially to afford that. And I didn't want to put myself in that position for years trying to pay all those student loans back. In the UK, there are other options for development within a workplace. So you can build a career such as apprenticeships, development programs, you name it which I benefited from. So I didn't kind of need to go to university in a way. And I know in some countries that kind of thing doesn't exist. So that's why for many university is the only option. Oh my God, I just saw an owl. It was there, but when it saw me, it flew over there, but I couldn't get the camera out quick enough. Right, be quiet. I don't know if you can see, it's an, like an owl family under there. Little baby owls, but there we go on that rock. Can you see? I can't get close because it, obviously it will fly away. Goodbye owl. Oh look, there's a sign. Owls. I don't know what owls is in Spanish. Is it one of those words? Zone of owls, probably. The sun is very bright. I'm going home. I'm in, is it Los Arcos? I think I said that earlier. That's where I'm staying. It's very posh. There are all these ginormous houses, as you would expect. There's also an abandoned church somewhere, I've heard. Um, but I can't go on because I've still got my pelvis injury from Guaymas and climbing that hill has exacerbated it big time. I'm in agony. The sun is setting on my time in Sonora. Look at that. This video isn't over though, because I've got some food coming. Come on, amigo. You cannot leave Hermosillo without having chili doggos. Yes, we're having more hot dogs. This, these are actually from a place called Chili Doggos. And um, they're just bloody brilliant. I know we had them in um, another video, I can't remember where, but they're top tier. You know, as I said before, you know, people say, oh, hot dogs, they're not Mexican. Hot dogs can be Mexican. There's bacon, there's cheese, there's sausage, there's jalapenos, there's everything you want. I've, all, I've got extra buffalo and extra extra ranch as well. These are gorgeous. And I've got two because I'm a greedy bitch. Mm. Yeah, chili doggos are so enjoyable. I actually had some last night as well, I'm not going to lie. They're not just any old hot dog. They're chili doggos. We've got so many different ingredients on. Like the one we had in Obregón. They're so satisfying as well. Yum. I'm going to leave this video on a quote from the most recent Scream movie between one of the killers and Gal Weathers. It goes along the lines of, your story's over. It's time to pass the torch. It's all yours, bitch. And then Gal Weathers kicks her in the face. And that's the kind of analogy I'm using because I've talked about over-familiarity and also nostalgia in this video. I kind of have both when it comes to Northern Mexico, but now I feel like it is time to move on. Over familiarity, sometimes it can be a bit shit, like, oh my god, another hill, you know. But there is nostalgia as well, and it's not necessarily a bad thing to have nostalgia and over familiarity with somewhere because it kind of shows that you've got a lot out of what you wanted from a place. You can use it as a metaphor for anything in life about moving on, but the important thing is knowing when to move on. And for now, I feel like this is the time for me to move on from northern Mexico. There were so many things I wanted to do in Sonora that I haven't had an opportunity to do. Have back in order. Go to Parque La Ruina, which is the abandoned car factory, which is now like a food uh, truck place. And that just goes to show that a lot of people say that Sonora is this abandoned desert place with nothing to do. Clearly, there's a lot to do because I haven't been able to manage to do everything I wanted to do here in the time I've had. So um, Sonora has been brilliant. Northern Mexico has been brilliant as always, but I will be back in Torreón in the near future very briefly next up i'm getting on a 
plane, that's it. That's why I'm not going to the festival because I've got to be up at 6 a.m. for a plane back to Mexico City to pick up my Polish passport. Finally, that's another storyline which is being ended and something which is being written out a bit like Northern Mexico. See you next time. Hope you've enjoyed Enemacio and this Sonora series. I'll see you next time. I wonder if I'll be shocked. Probably not. Catch you later.